Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Apologetically Me. I'm Maggie. I'm Wanda. And we're here with an episode called Debate Me. Um, okay, so Wanda and I usually have, well, the reason why me and Wanda are so close is I think we agree on a lot of things. Like, mm-hmm. we have a lot of similarities, like um, personalities, food, drinks, like we, we like the same things. We pick up on each other's obscure references, which is really what I look for in a life partner anyways. Um, but this episode, we're going to talk about things that we fundamentally disagree on. Um, and something too is that Wanda and I, whenever we argue a lot or argue really hard, we tend to cry. So this episode may end in tears. Uh, whoever cries first will lose. Uh, and we have a special guest joining us later to moderate this debate. Um, but before we get started, Wanda, tell the people what you've got going on. So Maggie was the one who enlightened me on this, but according to her, Twitter's having this whole thing where is this really fashion or is the person wearing it just conventionally pretty with a nice body so they pull something off? And we got into this topic because of like sweatsuits that are coming back, like not like the juicy couture kind of like velvet sweatsuits, but like the big baggy sweaters and sweatpants, like the matching sets with like the basketball socks and the Nike Air Force ones. I know it's very specific, but like if you walk outside, you will see a lot of girls in this exact same outfit. And yes, we agree that people can wear whatever they want to wear. But the question is, is it does it look nice or does it look nice just because the people who wear it are conventionally pretty? That's a great point. So you'll see like Kendall Jenner, like, you know, tall, gorgeous, like a gazelle. She'll wear things like shorts, jean shorts, and like a Walmart t-shirt. But if you put it on someone else who is like a little bit bigger, like maybe not conventionally attractive, people like roast them on Twitter. They're like, oh my God, ew, why would you wear this? You look like a racist to me. You look like you're a trailer trash. But you see it on Kendall Jenner, you're like, wow, fashion icon. Like, I'm going to do this exact same thing. Yeah, really, the moral of this is like, do you think I can pull off a full sweatsuit? Can I make it high fashion? Can I walk into a store and not look homeless when I wear it? No, it's got to be the matching colors. That's how you know the difference between a homeless person and you (laughs) is that you have a matching sweatsuit. Actually, can we talk about the fact that ever since the pandemic and quarantine happened, the price of sweatpants and sweaters have gone up exponentially like why am i paying 70 dollars for like a gray cotton pair of sweatpants that is actually yeah i was looking for just basic sweatshirts and they're so expensive i have no idea why they used to be like 20 bucks and i Mm -hmm. never bought them because i was like i can't wear them to work whatever but now i'm like i'm at home i'm gonna do whatever and now they're considered in like quarantine has a new sense of fashion and everything is like through the roof It's ridiculous. Stop gouging us like this. So, Maggie, then, what is your quarantine update? Okay, so I've been going a little bit stir crazy at home. Um, And sometimes I'm like, man, my forehead is huge and I want to get bangs. So, like, back in December, I went to the hairstylist and I said, hey, do you think I should get front bangs? And she was like, I'll be real with you. Probably not. (laughs) I said, okay, fine. Let's get the next best thing. Let's get a little bit like curtain bangs going. So they've been growing out and I was like, I don't need to go get them. I can cut them myself. I saw a DIY on TikTok. Let's do this. So I cut my bangs and you can't see it now, but they're uneven. Let me. Oh, God. Oh, my God. (laughs) See, you can really see how uneven they are. Um, I didn't do it properly, but I think if I just like tuck it behind and like just like style it properly you you can't really see it only when i do that um i'm gonna try to fix it somehow i i'm afraid to because i think i'm gonna make it worse uh yeah so those who can't see it essentially when maggie put her bangs in front of her face the right side is about an inch shorter than the left side yeah that's pretty much it (laughs) um that is tragic and uh it's it's very choppy uh if you really know what you're doing do it but don't do it at 2 a.m when you're like i can do this that's funny that's really funny because you literally just talked your brother out of 
DIYing, like bleaching his hair. Yeah. And now he, you are at yeah. you are like at two AM, I cut my own bangs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> his was like, I'm gonna dye I'm gonna bleach my hair silver. I can do it myself. How hard can it be? It's only bleach and toner. And I said, You just listed two of the most dangerous chemicals. You can't just do this at home. You're gonna kill yourself. And I literally had to go into like okay, like police mode situation where you talk down like a suicide jumper off a roof because he was so determined he could do this on his own if only someone talked you down at 2 a.m if you come up to me in the street and you ask to look at my bangs i'm gonna fight you i'm gonna introduce you to wanda and maggie those are my fists yes (laughs) disclaimer they are my fists but not us (laughs) yeah maggie's gonna haul my ass out of my house to be like hey have you met wanda it's funny because I actually haven't seen you in, like, months. Yeah, I think the last time we saw each other was, like, before the last lockdown. So, like, that was, like, December. I don't even know what Maggie looks like anymore. She could be... Like, like this. A completely different person. <laughs> I don't even know her anymore. My bottom half is a horse. <laughs> okay, so who's your beef or crush of the week? So, once again, it's going to be a beef of the week. And... This week, um, I saw a tweet, and it basically goes, Captain America flew his ass to Tony Stark's front door and told him he was selfish for not leaving his family to fight Thanos. Watched Tony sacrifice himself for humanity, then quit, and went back in time to when America was segregated to slow dance in his living room with Lucy Ricardo. And that just got me thinking. America, Captain America... You are supposed to be righteous. You're supposed to want to do the right thing. But do you really do anything yourself? Or do you just keep pressuring this wonderful man to do things for you? Like, for example, do we not recall in the first uh, Avengers movie where Tony Stark sacrificed himself to go and close like the portal? And he could have died. Like, he was very okay with dying. What about the part where Tony Stark also went outside to fix the propeller so, like, the ship wouldn't come crashing out of the sky and he almost died doing it? Like, come on. Who Your is Honor, selfish here? Counselor is, is bringing up hearsay. What is this? This whole plot was Captain America, like, sacrificing so much of his life for the world. And then he finally got a life. Tony kind of got a life. Like, yeah, he it ended early, but like the whole thing was he like he was number one on his agenda. Like he put his own self interest in front of everyone else's. And yeah, that's... for the first movie, literally it's within character the first development, thirty like, minutes. Captain America got his ending. Like he he needed a little bit of life. He did what Tony told him to get. You're saying that because. Captain America needed to go back and dance with Lucy Ricardo. That was more important than Tony Stark being there for his daughter, who is like six years old and now has to live the rest of her life without her dad because Captain America wanted to go back in time to dance. If it came down to it, Captain America would have totally put his life down on the line for this. Like he was the last one standing in that fight with Thanos. He was ready to die. Um, and it sucks that there was only one way, like this was the one shot for them to win and it had to be Iron Man dying. I'm sure if Tony could, I mean, Captain America could, he would bring back Tony, but he was like, well, things are done now. Like, I don't need to fight anymore. Now that I'm, I have this opportunity to go back. I'm gonna like be with the girl that I love, the one girl that he loves. What about the whole like, um, Part where he just leaves Falcon and the Winter Soldier by themselves. I have not watched um, the Winter Soldier and the Falcon, so I can't comment on it, and we're not doing spoilers right now. But I'm just saying that Captain America should have not shamed Tony Stark for because everything that Tony ever did, except for the first like 45 minutes of Iron Man One, was to save the like the world. Tony Stark has sacrificed himself numerous times. And the fact that Tony Stark had a daughter, I don't think that Captain America should have pressured him. I think because it was 
okay, Doctor Strange was like, there's only one shot. There's only one way out of the millions that I foresaw. I think it all had to come together. Like, yes, it sucked that Tony lost his daughter and Pepper in the process. And I'm sure if Captain America had it any other way, he would have done it too. He knows, like, he's he's outlived his life. He's only there as, like, like a tool. Like, he's, like, a, a weapon in wars and fights. And, like, after this, like, the fight is done. Like, they defeated Thanos. He's good to live his life now. So if there was any other way, Captain America would have done this. The part, though, that I will agree with is that he kind of sucked for leaving Bucky like that. Just, like, he built up three whole movies where it was like, Bucky is my best friend. I cannot leave him. I got to bring him back. Mm-hmm. And as soon as he's done, he's like, I right, peace out, Bucky. I'm out of here. Yeah. And the fact that Bucky was his best friend growing up, the only person who cared for him after his parents died, who like helped him through that, who like constantly like upped his confidence when he was like the little five foot four squirt before he became Beauty. big Captain America. Like Bucky was always there for him. And I get it. Captain America sacrificed everything for him in like three movies. But then he was just, yeah, like you said, peace out. I'm bye Bucky. You don't need me anymore. Like he needs you. Yeah. Like I would be so mad if you just laughed and was like, hey, I'm going to go back to the 1940s. Okay. Anyways, Anyways right I think over. he's righteous. I still love Captain America. He's too righteous. Him. He's, no. We we need to look at him with a more critical glass. Okay. okay. What's Chris your... Evans, we still love you, though. We'd still marry you in a heartbeat. Yes. You, not Captain America, though. What's your beef? My beef of the week is TikTok. You know, I spend... A lot of time scouring TikTok, finding the cool things. I send you a lot of TikToks. Mm -hmm. TikTok I also put into my head to cut my own bangs. I favorited so many of those videos. I've watched so many of them. Um, But now all these like famous TikTok influencers all think they can act and sing. And I don't mean to be a critic because I can't act or sing either. But they really can't act or sing. It's really bad. And yeah, they're pretty, but like if you're 18, you're you're probably gonna be pretty anyways. Like Hollywood and, and the media, they love to gobble up the little kids. Like they're they're making a career out of this, I guess, which is good for them. But I'm still like, this is this is not good. Please don't do this. And maybe it's their agency. I don't know how the industry works, but my beef is TikTok for giving them this this opportunity when there are so many other talented people on there who actually deserve to be like actors or singers and you choose like the three most blandest wet dog personality people it's my beef i guess it's like if you don't sing if you don't act like if you can't break into hollywood or become like a youtuber you kind of like have no future on tiktok no one's gonna want you when you're like 25 and trying to still make it on tiktok yeah basically how you're successful on tiktok goes back to our two-step thing for tinder step one be attractive step two don't be unattractive yeah that's it personality really doesn't factor into really doesn't factor into tiktok and popularity and everything which is unfortunate yeah like you you listen to the stuff they say in interviews and it's like oh you're your vocabulary is very limited. It's not great. Hey. But again, they're they're 18, like they're young. What do they know? They're yeah. they're gonna grow up. I think we should stop also idolizing 18 year olds in general. Yeah. Idolize us. We're more than of age. We're mature. Yeah, definitely. Just wait until 10 years from now we look back at all these videos and we're like, oh my god, can you I can't believe what we said like that many times. Okay, we're joined here with our special guest, Kathy. But actually, before we begin, Kathy, do you want to say hi to the people? Hi, people. Long-time listener. <laughs> big fan. <laughs> big fan. Um, Kathy, do you want to maybe give an intro or share your first impressions of each of us? Well, I'm very excited to be here because I've listened intently every episode. You guys are so funny. And it's like very chill, but hilarious and important conversations that should be in the world and I know Maggie from undergrad 
she's really funny <laughs> like just really witty banter her twitter is hilarious and mm-hmm. wanda is just a fitness god we look up to her every day yeah <laughs> No, tell them the impression <laughs> that you wrote to me, the really savage one. <laughs> oh, I just think that Maggie has a really quiet confidence. Oh, the story? <laughs> yeah, the story. The one where it made me sound like an asshole. So Maggie and I met fourth year, and within a few weeks, I was just trying to bond with her, okay? We were in a group project together, so I said, hey, you're in commerce. Like, one of my exes was in commerce as well, and... I, you know, I volunteer that information. I should just expect her to follow up. But I did not expect her to say, oh, he was in commerce and he was in DECA. We're looking for a judge. Can you actually reach out and see if he wants to be a judge for us? And I said, no. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I knew the story. She told me the story very recently. I didn't know who it was like, who in particular she had asked But now that I know, like, I can put a face to it, it's, like, even funnier. (laughs) And, like, knowing Maggie, it's always, like, always be networking, right? So (laughs) it's very on brand for her. That's so funny. I apparently have no boundaries. I have very little recollection. Like, it sounds familiar to me, but I have also no recollection of doing this. I might have blacked out a lot of fourth year. Um, It wasn't mean or anything, but I just thought it was I I mean... It's very, like, the audacity I had, like, why? <laughs> like, why would I ask this? And man, I was dumb. Uh, I but I think that's still, it still continues to this day. I still tend to ask a lot of very personal questions. And I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe give it a few more months before, like, asking these questions. But right off the bat, I'm like, no, tell me everything. Tell me everything about your life. I need to know. Um, do you want me to give an impression? Give my first impression of you. Wow, absolutely. Okay, so again, we met in our first fourth year law class, fourth year corporate law class. I think it was what it's called. Uh, so you're sitting in the front row, and I was like, "Holy shit! Like this girl's so smart. Like she's probably in her master's or something. I don't know why she's taking an undergrad course." What? Because like every time our prof, hmm, I shouldn't say his name. Every time our prof would like ask questions and stuff, you'd be like the first one to answer it. And I was like, "This girl knows what she's talking about. Everything she says is so eloquent." And when you asked to be in our group, or I don't know, did we ask you? I feel like I asked you. But I was like, holy shit, yes, we got like a smart person in our group. We're going to oh. we're gonna kill this project. Um, and then I got to know you more. I'm like, oh my God, she's our age. Like, she's so smart. What the hell? I'm so dumb. I'm like one brain cell of what she is. Oh my God. Um, and I thought you were like super cool, super funny. We clicked like pretty quickly, I think. We also and- bonded because <laughs> we had a Maggie was open about her um disinterest in one of our group mates and I was like wow I love this girl <laughs> uh I shit talk a lot and mm. I think shit talking like brings people together you know 100% <laughs> agree with that yeah exactly um and and yeah it was uh it was pretty funny um and I re- yeah I really like that we clicked got along and we're still like pretty close to even this day like what three years later mm-hmm. three four years later insane yeah, Maggie's a big supporter of my uh, fandom of Macklemore. She DMs him like five times <laughs> over the past few years. <laughs> Doesn't respond at all. Oh, love it. Do you still do it? I, I did it like last week. <laughs> Just routine now. You're like, ah, yes, I haven't DM'd Macklemore for a while. Let me <laughs> let me pencil that in. So basically, this episode, Wanda and I are going to be debating again. We cry when we argue. Hopefully we won't be crying by the end of this episode. But if one of us cries and they lose, they forfeit the whole game. Um, so what's going to happen is we have a list of topics that Kathy hasn't seen yet for her to be very objective. Um, so we're going to take turns introducing the topic to give some context to you, the listeners, and also to Kathy. We're going to try to be as objective as possible at Wanda. Please be ob- objective. Um And we're going to each take turns giving our openers, debate like a couple rounds, and then we will turn to Kathy, who is our in-house judge slash law student slash law expert. Um, We we put our hands into Kathy. I just want to say no. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, we we couldn't have gotten a better judge. Like, who is more qualified than Kathy? 
very not good. <laughs> no, you are. You're way qualified. Okay, so moving on to our very first topic. Should you continue to consume lactose if you are lactose intolerant? So basically, a lot of people out there are lactose intolerant, yet they still continue to eat dairy products. Um, I am one of them. So as you can see, I am against this. I think people who are lactose intolerant should not continue eating, drinking lactose, or at least try to control it. Like get some lactose-free milk. There are a lot of options out there. Lactose-free cheese, a lot of options. There's a lot of lactose-free options that are now out there that you have the choice to choose. Like you can choose these instead, instead of having upset stomachs and disgusting smelling gas. Listen, have you tried lactose-free cheese? I have, it like, it's good. Ugh. No, it is not good. It tastes like nothing like the real thing. Um, Your Honor, the counselor is um, interjecting when it's my turn. You asked me a question. You interjected. <laughs> Forgot my bad. My bad, my bad. Okay. Well, was everything? Listen, life is short, okay? Like, yes, it's it's an inconvenience, okay? An upset stomach. Gassy. It's It's not like you're gonna die, okay? Like, it's not like you need medication for it. There are there are also preventative medications you can take before eating dairy. Um, I really should take them. But, like, if they were more available to me, I would probably take them. I think it's good. I think it's it's hard to... When you've been... Okay, let me take a step back. Lactose intolerant only starts for people when you hit a certain age. Like, when you're younger, you do need dairy and stuff. You're not born... Not a lot of people are born lactose intolerant. I know I wasn't. Like, I only developed this when I got older. So it's hard for me to adapt a completely new diet, especially when it had really no impact over like my life. Like I think I'm still pretty healthy. It's just the upset stomach part. Um, and really like it's it's not a big deal. Like it's hard for me to give up a, a dairy products overall for, for something like an upset stomach. A lot of foods are going to give you an upset stomach. Does that really mean I have to say goodbye to chocolate and ice cream and cheese? <laughs> Also, a lot of places don't have lactose intolerant cheese. Like, if you go to other countries, have fun going on vacation. They won't have, they won't accept lactose intolerant. It's not, a, it's not a thing. Lactose intolerant is a privilege. Milk alternatives are privileges. Okay. <laughs> uh, first, I need to respond. You are born with an en like you are not born with an enzyme if you're lactose intolerant. So yes, from like you're born with the fact. You're born with lactose intolerance. You don't no, develop I used it to later. Drink milk no, 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 no. You're born with it. Depending, like milk every night, and I didn't die. Like two percent milk. See? You are born. You are not born with an enzyme that can pro, pro like process like lactose, which means you are born with it. There's no way that like it changes such that you can like you get it from your parents, and like also Asians are predominantly more likely to be lactose intolerant because they're not born with that enzyme to process it. And actually, humans are not supposed to have lactose in the first place. Like it's not that actually, it's not good for you. And like the whole like dairy industry, big dairy is trying to push the fact that you need dairy products. You can get calcium, vitamin C, vitamin A, all these things that you can find in dairy products through like fruits and vegetables and like other stuff. Like you don't need, you don't need dairy. You need calcium, I agree, but you do not need dairy. So all the choices that you make, like, okay, Take, for example, you are allergic to something. You are going to try to avoid being near that. Like, let's say you are allergic to dogs. You're going to try to be, you're going to try to stay away from dogs. Or let's say you're allergic to eating apples. And so you don't eat apples. Like, you make a conscious, conscious choice to avoid those things. And you should, because, like, it's not always just about, like, an upset stomach. Like, why why is eating dairy so important to you that you would get an upset stomach for like i i don't i don't get it like why would you put yourself through this discomfort because you know what's wrong you can take it out of the equation but you still do it anyways and like yeah i'm not saying you should never consume it like you of course like there's going to be certain times at restaurants and stuff like you have to be like oh i this comes with cheese. I didn't know that. I can't pick it off. Whatever. I'm not going to complain about it. It's not as like, you're not, 
it's not like a shellfish allergy where your tongue will swell up if you eat it or something. So you just deal with it. Sure, that's okay. But like just being more mindful of the fact of like what you consume. Like in it in itself, it is like an allergy to lactose. So why are we not treating it the same way? Maggie, are you advocating for consuming dairy products uh, when you have lactose intolerance and like knowing that it would lead to an upset stomach? Yes. Okay, so dairy alternatives is not your position. Dairy alternatives are okay because I do like dairy alternatives. Yeah. But I, I won't go out of my way to to like avoid dairy, like ice cream. I won't go for the dairy alternatives because they taste like garbage. I think, okay, if you had severe allergies, like your tongue swelled up, that kind of thing, like you need to seek emergency medical attention, that is probably something that you should really be mindful about and actively avoid. And something to do like pollen. I'm so allergic to pollen. What can I do about that? I can't like take away all the pollen in the world. I have to go outside. I got to take preventative things. There are preventative things out there to help you. <laughs> I, I realize I'm like trying to find a middle ground because I'm taking alternative dispute resolution. <laughs> I'm trying to like <laughs> find the middle <laughs> The alternative is Maggie should try to drink or eat dairy alternatives when she can and not and all like all the time not all the time because yeah i agree there's sometimes where like ice cream just doesn't taste as good when it's like lactose free but i feel like we've come to like an age where modified milk modified cheese it's pretty stinking close to the real but also i think things like with dairy alternatives are slightly more expensive too I think normal dairy products are, I don't know, maybe it's like big dairy pushing their agenda again, but normal like full dairy products are way cheaper compared to like dairy alternatives. So maybe some people can't financially afford it. I will definitely pick and choose the days where I'm like, okay, I don't want to die tonight. I'm sharing a bed with someone. I'm going to go for dairy alternatives. I'll pay the extra. But if it's just me, I have my own bathroom, like whatever, I'm going to go for it. Have my full dairy products. Enjoy my life. Are you willing to die for lactose? Yeah, I'll die for a lot of things. <laughs> lactose will be one of them. Okay. Yeah. Kathy, it's come to a draw or conclusion. You need to choose a winner here. Honestly, at the very beginning, I sided with Maggie because on the whole, I feel like people should have the right to choose what they want to consume. But Wanda made some very convincing points. And I think that advocating to continuously hurt yourself even if it's just your stomach is a bad precedent to send and so i'm gonna go with wanda on this one thank you i I agree to all the lactose intolerant (laughs) people out there i really tried to fight our battle every day is an uphill battle because jordan (laughs) and maggie on this hill are both lactose intolerant and they both refuse to do anything about it i think it's also up to each person like i'm lactose intolerant for milk but i can eat ice cream fine you know it's like you gotta know Mm -hmm. yourself but Mm -hmm. (laughs) to repeatedly hurt yourself knowing (laughs) the result is not good (laughs) no okay not repeatedly but i think being mindful of when you're gonna hurt yourself just just know I think Maggie recently just said, uh, like, I don't think I can find it right now, but she's like, I like hurting myself. <laughs> or, <laughs> no, I said, I love pain. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ba- same thing, basically. <laughs> so, disclaimer I don't love pain. It was just for the meme. Hand in hand, anyways. <laughs> oh, okay. God. So, Kathy, have you watched How I Met Your Mother? Oh, my God. Shout out to Kim. We've been watching it over lunch. This question or this debate topic is who is the worst character ethically and subjectively in How I Met Your Mother, Lily or Ted? Okay, wait. So I've only watched like three episodes. Oh. I need to- <laughs> oh, shit, are we going to spoil this for you? No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, realistically, it's been out for a while. Yeah. So it's pretty hard. It's one of, like sitcoms, I think, are pretty, like, it's pretty hard to spoil a sitcom. I'm just going to Google what Ted looks like. He's the main, the main character. character. Okay. And then Lily is Marshall's yes. one. girlfriend. Lily, and she was stabbed fiance. in the eye or arm no, when she Marshall was, proposed. No, her the bottle cork hit her in the oh, eye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was stabbed in a different episode. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. 
um i guess like a little bit of background so there's this show called how i met your mother <laughs> please don't watch the ending it's terrible and uh there are characters there's a main character ted who voices the um I, it, he's when he's narr- older and he has kids he narrates as bob saget or bob saget narrates it what happened when he was in his 20s and how essentially he met their mother and in the story is lily marshall they're together um and they've been together since uh i think the freshman university there's robin who is like ted's love interest there's barney who is like their friend who's also like a big player and everything and then there's ted who is the main character the architect who's trying to find love throughout the seasons um yeah okay so ted is problematic wanda is saying that ted is the worst i am saying lily is the worst okay so lily i think is ethically and subjectively the worst character in how i met your mother there are so many instances where ev- her friends have just brushed it off of how manipulative crazy and what an asshole she is so first she marshall is a great guy i think he is like one of the sweetest characters in the show he's like so funny he's so wholesome it's great lily i'm so sorry kathy to spoil this lily dumps him goes to san francisco to pursue her dreams of being an artist and she only comes back to him when she fails and another thing too like the whole show like she gets mad at marshall for not supporting her marshall does everything in his power to support her he gives up his dreams um lily got them into so much debt she avoided it did not tell him like until they got a house like they were declined like they were so ready to move forward with their life and they got declined because of lily's shopping addiction and she refused to even help out with their debt and marshall had to take up a job that he absolutely hated like it was legit killing him and it was like the worst moments of his life at a corporate law place he hated it so much but they paid him so much money and he was doing it for her because she refused to sell her stuff she refused to admit that she had a shopping problem she just continued shopping and then when an opportunity came up for t- for him to take like a better job like an environmental law which is his passion she was like oh my god i don't even know who you are anymore like why would you do this like you're such a sellout to like college you like you should be like doing what you really love and he's like but this is money this is really good money for our future everything marshall does is for her she is super manipulative too like with ted's girlfriends ted goes through a lot of girls in the show you'll see later lily if she doesn't like them she will manipulate them to for ted to break up with them or vice versa like she is like the puppet master in that group and they brush it off like it's a funny thing but it's not and she is an overall shitty person uh marshall deserves way better she sucks okay wanda over to you that was actually pretty good Thank very you. i was very happy with that one um okay Two, three. i guess i agree she's a bad person yeah okay so Ted also sucks ted also sucks yeah. And I would argue that he sucks worse because not only does he like torture the people that he loves like Lily does, he also tortures the women that he dated. Okay, starting with the people he loves. He is terrible to Barney. He constantly reminds Barney that he is not the favorite. He is not the best friend. He always says that Marshall is better than Barney. And like, who does that? Who pins their friends against each other? Barney works so hard to be Ted's friend and like constantly takes them out with him. Like sometimes they make bad decisions. Yeah, but what friends don't and everything. You don't need to constantly remind your friends that they're not your best friend. Like what kind of person does that? Another thing, his kids. Who makes their kids sit through like eight seasons long of stories about all (laughs) your sexual conquests as a dad? Think about it. Like. He talks in detail about the girls that he sees and he dated and like how it didn't work out and like into detail about how when he slept with them and then how. okay, so in one instance, he broke up with his girl over the phone on her answering machine. And I think it was her birthday. And then Ted decides, like, what if the person that I meant to be with was actually someone that I'd already been with before? So then he decides to call her up again. They have sex again. And then he dumps her again through the answering machine. And I also think it was her birthday or something happened to her again. Right? Like, who? what kind of person goes back and, like, dumps someone again on their birthday? 
him as a character he's pretentious he know like he literally is constantly like oh i'm the architect i know everything i and the fact that like remember the intervention episode someone will say something and he'll immediately correct them and like people kind of like brush it off and everything because like they don't really notice it but then it's it's kind of an issue like why would you want to be with like a friend that constantly does that to you and also the other thing is that he doesn't tackle things immediately like he always like puts them off to like the last minute and then he's like oh shit i have to deal with this now i don't know how to deal with this and he's just like in a constant depression spiral like nothing seems to be able to pull him back um except for maybe like a new woman that he dates and he always leaves his friends to be with these like random ass women like he'll easily flake on his friends to be with like women or make his friends do things like throw a whole party multiple days in a row even when marshall had his law exam and marshall's like ted no like i really have to study now like we've thrown parties two days in a row no like we can't do this again and ted's like no please like i need to impress robin like i need robin to like like me and everything so then marshall's like okay fine and everything like his friends just all go along with him for like some reason and yeah like lily manipulates other women and like every and like marshall but like ted manipulates literally everyone in his friend group like he doesn't seem to care about anyone but himself i agree with that but i would argue that lily does it even more like she will manipulate everyone in the friend group like she will guilt them into helping her when she needs it and she when she left to san francisco she abandoned all of them like she didn't say goodbye to any of them she only came back because she failed as an artist because they all said that she was shitty and she was like, okay, I need to go to the next best thing, which is back to Marshall. So if she was successful, Marshall brought up a great point too. He asked her, if you were successful, would you still be here with me? Which is very a very fair question too. She probably wouldn't have. She was willing to throw it all away. She only sees herself at the very center. She's a very selfish person too. When Marshall was up for, I think Supreme Court, um, judge or something a dream by the way which he's been waiting for for years she uh, she wanted to put her job before his she was like well it's my career you need to support me you don't support me at all and she was like i need to go to italy to pursue this whole art thing um his whole art her whole art thing too requires her to party like all night long so marshall had to not only work his day job he also had to take care of their baby and she wanted another baby too and to go to Italy. And he was like, I physically cannot do all this. I have to give up my dream. Like one of us has to give in. And for some reason, Lily's just came out on top and she treats all her friends like they're kindergartners, which is very stupid. Um, like she like she thinks she can use like the, the tactics she uses on her class with adults. She almost got Ted fired because like she took away his boss's ball and was like, until you learn to behave better, I will return this ball to you. And that almost got him fired. Like she, she will straight up do whatever she wants without even thinking. She is not a rational person. She is very manipulative. I would say she's worse than Ted. Um, she treats everyone like garbage in her life. There is no one she seems to really love except for herself. That's not true though, because she actually does treat Robin really well. Like she always like stands yeah, by she Robin whenever she's. Robin. Yeah, but that doesn't mean like that doesn't mean that she doesn't treat people in her life well. Ted has wronged but every single. The thing is, Lily actually is trying. Your Honor, I not, I need to interject. Lily has also manipulated Ted and Robin breaking up. You see later that she was the one who told Ted to ask her, "Where do you see yourself in five years?" She was the one who brought up that question, so she wanted them to break up. She manipulated that situation. On the other side of that, though, you could say that Lily actually truly cares about her friend's happiness. Because think about it, she knew that robin and ted weren't right for each other because robin was young she like what where did they see herself like to ask that question was actually saving ted from like a long-term heartbreak so the things that she does she does do in like a somewhat good intention or what she believes is good like she's trying to save ted she's trying to save robin ted from getting his heart broken later on robin from like being trapped in this relationship with ted the soul sucking demon of like a person right and like the things that she also like does for barney and stuff like she all like wingmans him and everything she has redeeming qualities the thing is what where she is fundamentally flawed is that her like 
moral compass isn't quite right. But she still does things where she believes is for the best. Like if she was like, if her moral compass was slightly better, all of her actions, people would be like, yes, this is good. Like she's manipulating people to help them. She's not manipulating people because she thinks that that is like the, like she just wants to have fun or something. Like her intentions are good. I disagree with that. Who is she to play judge, jury, and executioner to bring up that question of where do you see yourself in five years? It's, a relationship is between two people. She it, shouldn't have to get involved but at all. But they're all involved anyways because, like, they all share, like, what happens in the relationship together. This isn't, like, a yes, real-life relationship. She purposely, she purposely wanted to break them up because she because she was like, no, 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 I don't see this going anywhere. Ted really wants his own thing. But you don't get that. People can change, Lily. Like, things happen over time. Like, five years later, but Ted was still she, single. Yeah, but the thing is, Ted should like, stay single. their priorities because... changed. They still loved each other. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lily's moral compass is so off the charts. She thinks she can play judge, jury, and executioner. Ted, he, he doesn't know any better. I mean... That okay, shouldn't no, be Ted, an excuse. Ted's moral compass. No, it's not. Ted's moral compass also sucks. But you can see how he has like glimpses where even he's like, Lily, this is not right. You cannot do this. Yeah. And he doesn't that do that self reflection on himself. But, he doesn't know any but better. Ted of all people, where he will go up to Lily and be like, no, you're wrong. You cannot do this. Like it has been the start of so many arguments between them. Um, and like they all agree. They're like, yeah. Ted is in the right here. Like, Lily, you can't keep doing this to people. There have been so many confrontations with Lily, like so many fights because of how she keeps meddling and like pop, like playing the puppet master with them. Like they all get very mad about it. Um, and the fact that um, Ted, like he has glimpses where he is a decent person. Like with Barney and Robin, he had feelings for Robin, but he didn't pursue it. Like he bowed out. He was willing to leave for that because he was like if i stick around like something bad will happen i can't continue to do this to my friends i want them to be happy where, something where that bad will happen like wow way to think high of yourself ted like well, you I think that like, just because i'm a rat like just because you're around that robin's gonna fall madly in love with you and no, ruin his, her it's, perfect it's relationship with will, barney it's the fact that he can't continue to be around his ex-girlfriend and yeah, his best and friend and that's bad like he literally just it's left he couldn't have been happy for he them can't. he just left them and he was like you know what he I, is happy for them but no. he needs to think of himself too he can't be there to torture himself like that he can't be with the girl he wants he has to leave you know he you could have been with the, to stick he around could have that. been with the girl that he wanted but instead yeah, if he lily was a didn't trash person like that no that's not because okay. of lily no the issue is ted himself lily knew that ted was not ready for robin and robin was not ready for ted if lily but didn't look, intervene Robin they would have just married. they might have broken up as friends and like that would have like split up the group and everything like lily even has, when they broke up they still all hung out lily together has lily had no lily has good intentions her no moral intentions. compass is just yeah. off so if her moral compass was like similar to like someone who's better than the actions that she took you would be saying that oh she is a good person there is no way to frame that as good intentions. I'm going to break up this couple. No, that's that's not good okay. intentions at all. You can't do that. It, Ted is just, me. if you think about it in a nutshell, Ted is just trying to find love. Excuse oh, me. good intentions. Bad Which execution. Means, yeah, he's just trying to find love. He literally has like left a trail of broken heart. Think about how much women he has hurt. Like Barney, yes, he's a player. He doesn't like, this is his thing, right? Ted is supposed to be this good guy and he has hurt more women than Barney. At least Barney sets expectations. But, it's, but, but Ted is like, no, yeah, I'm so high because, and mighty. And, it's and worse you, because Lily continues to keep hurting her loved ones it's not even ted strangers. continues I mean, to keep hurting his loved better. ones too he hurts she every hurts single person that friend group. all the time he she, literally marshall is stuck <laughs> in an abusive relationship okay. i think it's been established that they're both pretty toxic people but yeah. in terms of comparing i i want to pose a question to you maggie like the fact that you know lily went to pursue her career and it ended up being that within her relationship with uh the guy the lawyer that her re- career came out on top don't you think that or do you think that establishes a good precedent for women um who are viewers i think it's not bad that she put herself first i think it's bad the fact that she went back to him when her career failed what else was she, she supposed to do everything he did even when she was pursuing her artist career was supporting her she wasn't open with him at all about going to san francisco 
like she she like left him in the dark she just basically abandoned him like it's about open communication too you're not the only person involved in this relationship she was just like completely out of the picture yeah but you also have to think about it like she did have like like a nervous breakdown basically to be able to go to san francisco like she was kind of unhinged for a little bit because she continues like, she to be wasn't unhinged. i know but it was just like that moment like she you could tell that she wasn't like fully mentally there like something was like wrong with her and like it felt like she went to san francisco because that was the only way that she knew how to like solve it and yes i think it's bad that she didn't communicate that with marshall but a lot of people in real life relationships don't have open communication. Like the fact that she went isn't that far off from like how some relationships happen in real life. She did do something for herself because she's like, she checked herself. She was like, wait a second, something's not right. And then she went to go pursue something that she was like, I think this is what I need to do. And I need to do it away from Marshall because I don't know who I am without him. Because she's been with him since the first, like, since she was 18 years old. And like, do you, like, it's hard to find who you are by, like, she even said this. She's like, it's hard to find who you are by yourself when you've been an item with this other person for so long and i like respect the fact that she although it wasn't the best execution i respect the fact that she went to go find like who she was by herself i respect this too that she did this but the fact that she continues to rely on marshall and continues to accuse him of not being supportive of her at all she did this one thing herself that's it the whole season she went back to being super dependent super like accusing of marshall she threatens to leave like so many times that Ted has to talk her out of it. She's like, I'm done with this. She never voiced it at all to Marshall. Um, and she's just like, you're not supportive of me at all. He's been supportive of her since day one. Like even going to Italy, abandoning his own dreams, like getting her out of debt. Hey, she did nothing for herself except for that one thing. Of going that's to on Francisco. their relationship too, though. Think about it. Like why is Marshall not talking to Lily about it? Why is Lily going to Ted to be talked down of, out of their like from breaking up with Marshall like shouldn't if this is so like this problem is not one-sided and I think this is internalized sexism because you tend to blame the female for what happens in that relationship where very like it is very much like also Marshall's fault because he doesn't communicate with her too he hides things from her he doesn't voice his opinions where he's like hey I'm giving up my dream like can we think about like can we weigh this? Like, he just goes along with it. He just does whatever she wants to do. Why is he not saying anything too? He is almost equally at fault here. Like, this is not a perfect relationship. Yeah, but I think you're right. It's not a perfect relationship at all. But I think the reason why they have to take to hiding things is because, like, Lily just does not want to talk about it. Like, she'll just, like, blow up. She'll run away. Like, she does not stick around. Like, Marshall is in a situation where he's, like, basically held hostage because it but the reason why it's their problem is because of her she is the source of the problem but like do we really but like we don't that's the thing though because it's like he is not standing up for himself either like yes okay you put a pause on it you don't like he let's say he like brings it up and she blows up again like open communication tell her this that's is a not toxic right relationship this is a toxic this is, okay this is not this <laughs> yeah is not easy in a toxic relationship it's not easy to be like you should have just stood up for yourself We're but also why doesn't now. he leave this is still victim blaming it's not easy for victims but, to leave <laughs> um i think that wanda gets it this round like you know lily's relationship with marshall is questionable and toxic but we don't know what's going on in the relationship it just seems like um like yeah we don't know what's going on you, in that you relationship. you and kim watch this tell me what you think after <laughs> next topic um does social media bring more harm than good we're including all the apps in this all the social media we've seen the social dilemma um so i think it brings more good wanda says it brings more harm uh, for background, Wanda has deleted all social media in preparation for this debate. <laughs> um, I have not. I have added more. Okay, Wanda, you go first. Um, yeah, so 11 weeks ago, before we decided to make this episode, uh, I had deleted all my social media as part of this experiment. And I can say that, yeah, I am 
honestly happier. Like I spend more of my time away from my phone. I feel like my eyes are a lot less strained. I don't constantly like scroll through like Instagram and then go on Facebook and then like go back and forth, just like not going about my days. I think I'm way more productive. I have much less screen time. And I think like I'm also healthier mentally too, because like now when I look at like influencers and stuff, right? Like I usually see like the Instagram versus reality stuff rather than just like the perfect bodies that you see on Instagram. Like that is like, you don't think it affects you, but it feels like a self-esteem blow. Like it does, you're like, why can't I look at that? And then you start comparing yourselves to them. Like, how do I get a bigger butt? How do I get a smaller waist? How do I eat healthier and everything? And that doesn't really help you. And now like, I don't have those like self deprecating thoughts as much being like, why am I not that pretty? Or like, why am I not that funny kind of thing? Like I still get tidbits of social media from like Maggie. Oh, where okay, blame me. <laughs> she doesn't like, she doesn't send me like fitness inspo though, which was like my entire Instagram feed at that time. Um, but like the things that she sends me are all just like things that are funny from TikTok or things that are funny from Twitter. Um, and that's as much social media that I really need. Like it, the, the other aspect of it is like, I don't have to post anything anymore. Like I can almost like enjoy my time out with having, without having to like document it for like other people to see. Like when I go out and do something, it's more for like, oh, I'm doing this for me. And like, I didn't really think, like, or I didn't really think. I never had that thought where I'm like, am I doing this for other people? Why am I posting these things? Like, if you post food stories, though, still love that. I would like to go to those restaurants. I like those food recommendations. But like everything else, like, why am I posting like me having fun? Like, why do I need to? Like, why does everyone, anyone else like need to see that? And the like the pain I had to go through to like get the perfect picture to post on my Instagram feed and like having to be like, okay, now what's a funny caption, Maggie? Like, give me a caption that I can post that people would like like this and everything. Or like, oh, I don't like how my stomach looks in this picture. I don't like how my thighs look in this picture. Or like my toes look weird here, right? Like you become so self-critical and so self-judgmental just to post this one picture on Instagram. And now it's like, I don't have any of that. I feel more free. I also hate when people brag on LinkedIn. So I wish I could get rid of that too. <laughs> um, you brought up great points. I will say though that social media isn't like the root cause of of like all the influence, isn't the, like the main source for all the influencers, for all the Photoshopping and everything. Like you're going to see this everywhere you go, like print ads ads in general tv shows like people like people naturally don't look like that people are very flawed so deleting social media isn't gonna like delete all your insecurities either like they're still gonna be there i'm sorry but i think it really depends on how you use it and how like you you mentally take care of yourself i think it is the best of both worlds like how like posting for example i barely post i don't even post my stories i'll, I'll post if i want to if it makes me happy um, but I think it like social media is good. I think it reconnects me with people. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't even be talking to either of you. Like, I guess we could text, but like, but it's, Wanda, it's we just, can talk to each other, right? Yeah. yeah you okay. Cut out Maggie you, completely. <laughs> okay. I have an iPhone. You guys can still text me. Um, but I think it's, it's my way of staying connected to people. Like I like to see what people are up to. I like to see, like my relatives are halfway around the world. Social media, ever since we got social media, it's been so great. Other than that, I've had to call them using um long distance calls like we had to use like dial-up phones like buy the long distance card and call people that was such a pain the fact that social media is here now like we can facetime whenever we want like call each other text each other it's such a great tool like i can stay connected to them i can really stay in their life instead of waiting to see them the next year or waiting to call them through shitty dial-up connection i think it really depends on how you use it but i think it's reconnected so many people like i can find so many lost relatives um, I can see what they're up to. They can see what I'm up to. We can share things with each other, like pictures, whatever. It's great. Yeah, but I think it's like you could do all of those things just through like a messaging app. Like you can have your relatives send you pictures through messaging apps and you can oh, call sorry, them. I didn't realize that you, I was rich. What? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I like to a long distance number like that. You're going to charge like 50 bucks for that. No, I'm saying like if you like. 
iMessage. You can use like my uh, phone. You could use like what is that <laughs> disappear? Phone. You can use Signal. Uh, there's other messaging yeah. services out there that don't necessarily like what I see as like social media is like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Vine, Snapchat, and like I think messaging Instagram. apps still fall into Facebook though, or like Facebook Messenger, because that's like my main source of communication. Okay, but like if you didn't use Facebook Messenger, you you could use other things. Like you could use like Signal, you can use like WhatsApp and stuff. Although I don't like WhatsApp either. But um Signal. Owned by Facebook. Wait, yeah, exactly. question. Yeah. Wanda, how do you feel about WeChat? I hate it. I think it is a cult. But yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're so you would categorize that as social media, even though most yes. people in China only use WeChat. Yeah, I think it's social media because like you have like a feed. So like you can post like pictures and stuff. You can post like updates, like statuses and everything. So, like, I think that falls enough into social media. But I think okay. if it's pure messaging, I don't consider it social media. Okay. Not to get personal, but when you say you deleted social media, did you delete WeChat as well? I did never had WeChat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I thought that uh, would be my, my... mom mess- I messages me and my dad I messages me. Wow. And then I don't know how to talk to my other relatives because... I don't speak Chinese and I don't write <laughs> Chinese. So that's kind of, <laughs> um, so I guess I should clarify. So I got rid of Facebook, but I still use Facebook Messenger because I can't talk to any of my Android friends without it. Um, I got rid of Instagram and I never had Twitter. I never had WeChat. I would like to get rid of WhatsApp, but I use it for group projects and stuff for school. Um, and the only i guess the only social media i use is now reddit but i mostly use it to get news and relevant memes what i should say so with social media i think it's good because it brings together communities like niche things that you like you can go on youtube facebook twitter like Mm -hmm. you can talk to people about this it really makes like that fan base it supports artists it supports the arts in general like you can find cool things to connect about you're not you're not out there alone. Like people who are going through mental health problems or people need to look up, like, is this, is it normal? Like <laughs> there are things like you Google need does to- Google that. <laughs> Mac, you- <laughs> <Search history. laughs> yeah, Google does that. But like when I read things, I like to go on Reddit personally and see like, is are there actual like, people here who can resonate with this? Not just WebMD. I need to see that there's a form of people that we can all like, com- like connect over like a certain thing. Like yeah. we can all like share- they see if things work like it's a great community i think but there's like yes i agree it's good but then there's also like so many harmful effects of it and like i can't like i like i used to watch stuff where it was like oh i quit social media and this is how much my mental health changed over like the next couple of weeks and like i was like this is complete bullshit like social media does not affect me whatsoever up until the point that i quit like the main like instagram facebook and everything is when like i saw like nothing in the first week like the only thing that i like noticed was that my finger would constantly go to where instagram was on my phone it was like muscle memory and i would like click it and then but it wasn't instagram there anymore and i'm like oh what the fuck am i doing and that happened for like the next two weeks until eventually i broke out of that and then the first two weeks i was like it nothing's new like it this isn't helping my mental health at all but now like after it's been like almost two three months like it feels like you just feel more free like you don't like there's no like additional pressure you feel more like confident and secure and like everything just feels like slightly better like I don't know how to like I can't say how exactly it depends on the habits too because you were like a pretty frequent poster like to your stories or anything like that I think it depends on how you use it is how it's going to affect your mental health. Like definitely for you or for like other people out there who do post a lot. Like I I do say like it would bring more harm, but I think it's, it's really like good or bad there. Like people like other people who don't post as much or who just like silently browse it. I think it's a, like when you just take a look at it, it has good intentions. It's just bringing together communities. Like you're just there to browse and you're not like really letting it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it does impact you in like unconscious ways, but I personally like don't think it will do anything for me because I don't post like I don't think I'm I'm getting like a lot of fake pictures 
I'm just getting like funny content. Like there's, it's, I'm just using it to talk to my friends. I'm using it to see what my friends are up to. I'm connecting with people. I think the, I think that's you just saying the good, in, good intentions is not true. I don't think any social media company has good intentions. They might've started with good intentions, but that's not where things ended up because why are they making it such that the apps are this specific color of blue so they're more addicting? Why do they make it so things autoplay so you spend more time on the app? How is that something that's supposed to be good intentioned? Why are they trying to get you to spend more time on this app if they have good but intentions? It, if but they had a, good intentions, a... they would have done more things to help you. Like, hey, maybe you should take a break or like Which don't TikTok autoplay. Does like don't autoplay videos automatically or give you recommended content curated to exactly what you want to see like it's not good intentions all they're really in for is the money and i think like i was that person where i like exactly what you said i was like it's it's not like i'm not like a frequent social media user i don't post that much to like my feed and everything i mostly i'm just there to browse so i did not think it was going to like affect me when i got off of it but it did and that's the thing. You always say, think that it's not you. Like you aren't going to be part of like what they say in the social dilemma, right? Like it's not going to affect you in any way when you like get off of it. You're not going to be the victim of like all of these like terrible things that like social media does. But then you are like you are not that special. I'm sorry. I think I think it comes like back to the whole business strategy thing that goes back to any company, like all companies are trying to find ways to pull you in to get you to buy their products. It's unfair to say that, oh, social media is evil because of this. Like they, they chose this color. But you like, said those good are, every company says, yeah, every company has kind of has good intentions. That's not, but I think what Maggie was trying to say is like, there are good, you know, outcomes yes. of these structures. But I think the intention, it, like, but the word good intention, okay. it, it's good, not a good, not a good intention. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they want you to keep buying their product, keep doing things, but so does every company. We live in a capitalist world. Like, of course, everyone wants you to buy their products. Like, what else do you expect? No one's going to be like, no, 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 don't buy us. It's okay. I also did not touch on this whole other part about why social media is harmful. Uh, predators. So people who like, for example, TikTok is probably like the biggest platform for predators. 14 to 16 year olds are posting provocative videos on TikTok. And then people like who are 40 year olds, men, women are messaging them and like asking them for nudes, asking them to like do stuff for them for like money for anything like this. Your this platform is like ripe for people to be like assaulted and killed and like is that not more harm than good? Like, yes, you can say like the platform's not designed for 14 year olds or it's not designed for 16 year olds. You should be at least 18 to go on the platform. But like, no one's going to listen to that. Like when we were younger, we still got Facebook before we were old enough to like sign like the consent. You can just lie on the internet. Like no one's like, no one's policing that. Right. And like this has happened a lot in the world. We're also like more likely or not to sexualize people younger and younger, like Bobby Millie Brown, who had to delete like her like Instagram and her Twitter for a while because she got so much hate, but she's like 15 years old. Why are we hating on 15 year olds? Which is the other thing, the whole army of like someone saying like, oh, you should go like bad mouth this person because they did this. And like a bunch of users just like listening to this one person to like ru essentially ruin the life of someone with no evidence just because their favorite like influencer person or whatever told them to like it's it's like a hive mind that like people are creating so like not even just like the you and me effects of social media but like the greater effects of like social media are bad i think so to the first point predators are going to come everywhere like the social media apps like they will do their best if you report it they will block this person like sure it doesn't prevent them from making another account or something like that but like predators will come up to you in the park too they'll flash you they'll try to kidnap you like they're going to come at every angle like you just have to yeah but some do people, your best i guess it's the but same thing another with... thing too like to to spread information like to spread amberloids when people are being kidnapped there are so many times social media has come in handy to to like identify people to identify have you seen this person missing there are so many cases where it was like oh i saw this person on facebook okay i'm spreading this news you were spreading news to help catch these victims like social media is good in that sense like it, it brings people back home together. It reconnects people. 
And to your other point too, with celebrity bashing, um, like cancel 15 year old culture. sexualizing people that's cancel. Okay. Cancel culture is pretty rough with social media, but like even think about before social media, what we're using before we were using like forums, like people were going on magazines. At least now with social media, there are people out there who are showing you like the real life. Like they're still critiquing those magazines are still critiquing like things that are going wrong. So if you're just focusing on like one little aspect of social media, like, yes, it's bad, but you have to think about it like holistically, like there's still good aspects out there. I'm so glad you brought up information because misinformation, because of social media, we have gotten people who are anti-vax, anti-mask, uh, pro-Trump, these people, uh, racism, people are more racist than uh, they okay. were. People were racist before no, Facebook. No, 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 wait, <laughs> people were racist in private. Now people are racist in a cult <laughs> online because other people, they have found other, they have connected with other people that share the same views as them. And now because they're like, oh, wait, more people think this? I'm actually going to express it. I'm actually going to act on it. And now these people have joined together to be like, no, I'm not getting my kid vaccinated. And they think that's the right thing to do because their mommy group tells them that all these other moms did it and they're fine. That's the right thing because vaccines cause autism. Or if they like could organize like the Capitol riots, right? With like, oh, like I'm pro-Trump, you're pro-Trump. Oh my God, we should totally storm the Capitol. And they had a group on Facebook to be able to do that. They could organize on Facebook to do like real damage to our like justice system and like our political system and take down like democracy in a country just because of like social media and everything. How is that something like people are getting killed because of misinformation? And why do we not think that is more harm than good? Kathy, we turn it back over to you. Yeah, a lot of great points made. Um... I wanted to vouch for my <laughs> about the information part because I think like organizing through social media is so um, prevalent for good and for bad. Like the Arab Spring riots and other riots around the country are organized through social media. I feel like it's it can go either way. But over overall, I agree with Maggie. Like it's a tool. It's inevitable. Really, our society is moving towards organizing online and using these social networks. I think it's not yeah yeah I so I really think it's all about how you use it and I really like that Wanda took the break away from social media um I've done the same I always come back to it though because I think our society again is organized online but I definitely think it's important to like be mindful about how you use it um take breaks uh yeah I think what was uh helpful for me um, was when Maggie was talking about being connected with relatives abroad and I feel like as the world becomes more globalized um, like that's just so important I remember when we had to buy phone cards right and then it's like for a, a minute if we're saying that social media is used to connect people I'm saying that there are other options that you can explore if that is your main yeah, use like of social mail. media you're right I can always send mail like pigeon yeah send your pigeon my, to me my send my pigeon <laughs> It's good that we disagree, though. And I think that kind of mm -hmm. leads us to our question of the week is, who do you think won the debate? And who do you think won each question? Do you agree with the ruling? And do you think me and Wanda will stay friends after this? <laughs> Maybe. No. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no one cried. <laughs> and do you think you can argue better than us? Like, probably. Like, yeah. anyone can argue better than me, Yeah. Probably. We would like to thank Kathy for doing a wonderful job judging and keeping us tame. Civil. Civil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kathy, is there anything you want to plug? Wow. Well, my food account. <laughs> I was disappointed. No questions about food, but at watermelon skj is my food Instagram. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. You make you hand make everything yourself. I saw the noodles pick, loved it. We'll drop it down in the link below. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's another thing. It's a good way to share like recipes and like it supports the arts. Yeah, it, it really does. Mm -hmm. Still don't agree with you though, but I well, 
want to make you fight you after <laughs> yeah we're gonna get into a physical fight after this to see who actually won <laughs> i love it okay thank you so much kathy for being on here um let us know who you think should be a guest on next will you be one of our next guests we'll see also let us know what else we should talk about because we're running out of ideas yeah send us an email dm us on twitter dm us on instagram maybe you guys send your career a lot send us your courier pigeon Ooh, or, accept owl. Everything. <laughs> or owl or yeah. send us a free zoom link and we'll hop on but only send, for 45 send us an minutes ominous zoom link we will join <laughs> can't kill us over zoom okay thanks for watching everyone please like us on youtube subscribe on youtube and wherever you get your podcasts um please follow us on social media twitter instagram all that bad stuff that we were just talking about thanks for watching Bye. Bye.